Archie, the beloved comic book tale of high schoolers from a little hamlet called Riverdale. These are feel-good comics made to be easily digested by people of all ages. Then it became a teen drama slash Twin Peaks knockoff on the CW. Oh my god. What? Game changer. Archie got hot. He's got abs now. Six more reasons for you to take that ginger bull by the horns tonight. The entire first season of Riverdale has been about the murder of Jason Blossom. Naturally, fans have been freaking out and coming up with crazy conspiracy theories to buy their time until the culprit is revealed. Look, I'm not gonna say I saw it coming, but I certainly know who did. David Lynch in 1991. Has anyone ever heard of a little show called Twin Peaks, early 90s, all about the murder of Laura Palmer? Well, Twin Peaks fans, I have four words for you. It is happening again. One of the most dramatic characters on that show is one named Cheryl Blossom, played by Madeline Pis Petch Petch Pastiche Petch. Okay. Cheryl first appeared in Betty and Veronica number 320 in 1982. The issue featured Betty and Veronica going down to the beach where they discuss whether or not Veronica's one-piece swimsuit is too skimpy or not. Oh look, it's that one meme. Then the sensual redhead Cheryl Blossom shows up and Veronica asks her if her swimsuit is too daring. And Cheryl's like, compared to what? And reveals her sexy two-piece. Betty says she'll get arrested for wearing something so revealing. And Cheryl tells them that in many European beaches, people go topless. Betty says that this conservative little town will never have that happen, and Cheryl says that it's time for someone to shake things up. Then she starts to take off her bikini top, but is stopped by Betty. Cheryl's brother Jason then rocks up in his banana hammock, and the girls tell him about his crazy sister, and he's like, Oh, she can take care of herself. Now who wants a three-way? Then he brings out like a cola can that's been skinned and wraps it around a beer can so he can drink beer in public, but he's caught by a beach patrol officer. So as the patrol woman is taking away Jason, another patrolman comes up at, with Cheryl wrapped in a blanket and they kick him off the beach. Take the sexualization and risque factor that was featured in this Archie comic. And bump that shit up all the way to 8,000, baby. That's where we get Cherry Pop-Tart. Or just Cherry, because the underground comics creator, Larry Wells, got a cease and desist letter from Kellogg's. Cherry Pop-Tart was an underground erotic comic about a perpetually 18-year-old girl named, you guessed it, Cherry, and her sexually adventurous friends and family. And when I say erotic, I mean erotic. And that is why there will be a whole lot of censoring going on in this video. Also, let me tell you about my 40-page comic anthology that is now available for $19.99. It's called Destructo Boy and Other Exciting Tales. It collects three short stories, a futuristic sci-fi romp, a post-apocalyptic time-traveling superhero suspense, and an epistolary tale, that means it's told through letters, of two vampire hunters. And if you're at all interested, check out the link tree in the description for where you can buy this bad boy. But get it now before it's too late, because this is a limited print run. Released in 1982, written by Larry Wells, with art by Larry Wells, this is Cherry Pop-Tart, Issue 7. And don't worry, you can always pause this video if you need to, and come back in a minute when you're done. The book begins with Cherry and her friends Lola and Patty as they stand in their school hallway and gawk at the hot new science teacher, Mr. Richard Nutley. Lola has to smoke, so they all go into the bathroom as Patty begins to fantasize about how she'd have sex with her teacher. First, she'd catch him alone after class, where she will then be flirtatious until he can't resist her anymore. Then he'll her nipples and until they have right there on the classroom floor. And Lola's like, oh yeah, I'm so sure that's gonna happen. Then Cherry asks Lola how she would go about getting him to her. Lola says that she'd be totally cool about the whole thing. Meaning that after school, she'll pick him up in a limo because she's the Veronica to Cherry's Betty and she's rich, and Nutley will obviously climb inside, where she will then offer him a glass of French champagne as she begins to play one of those tapes of music that makes you horny. He'll obviously get drunk and horny, not necessarily in that order, and he is consumed by lust and desire. Then he'll kiss every inch of her body before and finally inserting his huge throbbing <laughs> oh god into her tight wet quivering <laughs> until they both explode all over the leathery suits of her limo you know i don't think 
girls really talk like this. Oh well, I watch porn. Who am I to question the legitimacy or accuracy of how people act? I'll just go and ask my stepbrother. Back in the bathroom stall, the girls all laugh and get aroused, especially Patty. Patty then asks Cherry how she would do it, and Cherry comes up with the most convoluted scheme to have a teacher have f with her that I have ever heard of. Her idea involves a science project on the comparison study of vaginal lubricants by testing 12 different products. And Mr. Nutley says that's an interesting concept and asks how he can help. This is like mall rats. Did Kevin Smith read this comic? So she'll take him to a little bed that she's set up in the corner of the school lab, and then she'll read from the testing procedure that she wrote herself. Step one, the test subjects disrobe. Step two, subject one it's the of subject two digitally and orally in order to achieve Step three, subject two inserts engorged into subject one's tight little and they engage in once they finish, Cherry checks off the no lubricant test and prepares for test number two. Lola tells her to be real, and Patty suggests that they go over to the science lab and spy on Mr. Nutley. So Patty leads the girls to a dumpster right outside the lab window. They climb on top and hoist Cherry up to the window where she sees Mr. Nutley having sex with LED, the computer nerd girl. Get it? Her name, it, it, her name is LED? Computers? Do you get it? Dismayed, the girls trash talk Ellie and call it a day. The end. Oh god, probably the worst part of this book. A letters page. Let's just assume that all of these letters are real and were sent to Larry Wells and written by real people and not him at a typewriter board. Letter number one. <clears throat> okay, so Cherry will be 18 years old always and forever. How about just turned 18? But please keep her in high school. Teenagers have plenty of opportunities for sexual encounters. In the locker rooms, restrooms, under the bleachers, at sports events, at school dances, at parties, at teen dance clubs, in the backseats of cars, at slumber parties, at youth summer camps, at weddings, and other family get-togethers where teens can sneak off and play. Sex was great in high school, but sometimes sexual fantasy was better. I'm sure this guy knows a lot about that. In my high school, there was a pretty girl who looked just like Cherry. Long blonde hair and long legs. I quietly, discreetly, sure, watched her every chance I got. In classrooms, hallways, in the cafeteria, library, her gym class. Her gym class? Why? Where the fuck was this guy at that it wasn't? his gym class also. Everywhere. One time, when she was wearing a miniskirt, I almost saw her panties when she turned around in her desk to talk to the girl behind her. A flimsy white blouse revealed her bra. Once when she had dancing in gym class, she saw a bunch of guys at the door watching, and she teasingly lifted her skirt up to her thighs and laughed. Another time, when she was wearing a- Okay, okay, I'm just- I'm just gonna skip these. Uh, Let's see, he watched her take off her shoes one time, he watched her brush her hair, watched her at the local pool, it sounds like he's a stalker, uh, watched her at the dance, uh, he, then he, he talks about the, quote, innocent bend of her knee, or the turn of her ankle, unquote, that would drive him wild. What the fuck? <laughs> also, the best part about this is that these letters are all replied to by Cherry in character. So here's Cherry's response. Of course I just turned 18. Didn't I tell you that? Sounds like most if not all the sex you got in high school was in your head. In your hand. Same as the guy who draws me. He got nothing in high school. The second lender is much more mundane. It's a guy who's like an actual fan of these comics. And he's asking why the name got changed from Cherry Pop-Tart to Cherry. Um, what kind of music Larry listens to. And like how often the books get published and how he can subscribe to it to get them delivered. This book does have two other stories in it. One is a parody of Star Wars slash Star Trek. The other is a Gilligan's Island parody with Cherry in it. I just, I don't really have the time to, you know, edit that part in. I'm in the last couple weeks of this semester. Um, so I'm just, you know, trying to get everything done <laughs> before the due dates. So I pass, hopefully. So I'll just be covering this first story for this, you know, episode, so that's why it's shorter. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I didn't personally care for the second or third story. I didn't think they were very good. Um, I enjoyed the first one more as a, you know, 
day in the life parody of an Archie comic rather than the parodies of bigger franchises. If you did enjoy this uh, Cherry Pop Tart comic and you want to read more, uh, Larry Wells does sell these books online on his Cherry Pop Tart website. I'll leave a link in the description for that if you want to do uh, pick some up. They're not the original comics, they are modern reprints. The book ends with an advertisement for an I Heart Cherry t shirt, which I desperately want. I'm a medium, if anyone has one. Looking at you, Larry. You don't have any of these, what, 40-year-old t-shirts sitting around anywhere? I hope you enjoyed this very different episode of What Is. Let me know what you thought of this story in the comments below, and leave any and all suggestions down there as well. Again, my 40-page comic, Destructo Boy and Other Exciting Tales, is on sale now for $19.99. Check out the link in the description. Follow me on Instagram, at Smokies Videos, and at Not Blake Wild for updates on my 166-page graphic novel set in the Old West. I'll see you next time. Bye.